I can also look at these binomial distributions as histograms. We can look at this binomial probability graph. So I can select my 2D column. I want to edit my data. So in my chart, I deleted the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's undo it so we can see what that looks like. So here's the bar chart that it gave me. The blue is the values for X. I don't want those charted. I want X to be my label. Delete the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, delete the, the blue series so that I'm left with this series 2. Um, I don't really like the legends because this isn't that complicated. We have one thing that we're looking at. So I need to change these labels on the x-axis. I've clicked on the bars and I'm going to go to select data. Here this horizontal category axis labels, click edit. Axis label range is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 5. Hit enter. OK, and we get that change here. If we want, we can edit our gap width. And remember that if you're on a Mac, you would have this design and format up here up top. So there should be something um, that would allow you to format your data point and change the gap width. So I can change it to zero and I get this nice Histogram, you don't have to change it all the way to zero. They can be bars that don't touch for a discrete binomial distribution. I'm going to make the outline. I want the outline for all of them to be black. So let's see if I can make them all black. No, there we go. Make them all black. Make sure they're all selected. Just so we can see it a little bit. And then if you don't like that color, I'm not a big fan of the orange, you can change that to blue or some other color if you want to. And Xing out of that, here we have a nice binomial distribution. We can see that it is right skewed. It looks like our graph is more heavily loaded on the left side. And that is true for the probabilities. Now, if I want, if I want at at least three. When I'm looking at this table and I want at least three, I'm going to add up three, four, and five, these three heights of the bars. Now I know I already have them in the table, but this is what those are representing, right? The bar gives us a nice visual for this. So just a reminder of how to create that, that graph using technology. Google will be a little bit different, but the ideas are still the same from what we talked about in chapter two. Let's take a look at another problem that has us calculate mean variance and standard deviation. The statistical bulletin published by Metropolitan Life Insurance Company reported that 2% of all American births result in twins. If a random sample of 8,000 births is taken, find the mean variance and standard deviation of the number of births that would result in twins. Let's first check and make sure that this is a binomial experiment so that we can use the binomial distribution formulas for mean variance and standard deviation. So four conditions for a binomial experiment. The first one is two outcomes, and we have that twins or not twins. We're only counting twins, not triplets, quadruplets, or more multiples, only twins. So twins or not twins. Those multiple births would fall into the not twins group with the singles. The second criteria for a binomial experiment is a fixed number of trials. Here we're looking at 8,000 births. So 8,000 will be our n. The trials are independent, and we have independence just by the fact that these are different births. So the situation in one birth is not going to affect any of the situations in the other births. And then the fourth one is the probability is fixed. The probability is the same for all the trials, and we have 2%, which will change to 0.02. So that 2% is going to be P. So for our outcomes, twins is going to indicate a success. So we have our values. N is 8,000. P is 0 
q, which is 1 minus p, is going to be 0.98, 1 minus 0.02, 0.98. And we can calculate our mean, variance, and standard deviation using our formulas for binomial distribution. So n times p, 8,000 times 0.02, we get 160. So on average, out of 8,000 births, we would have 160 result in twins. Variance. 8,000 times 0 0.02 times 0 0.98. In my calculator, I've already done 8,000 times 0 0.02, so I can just multiply that by 0 0.98. I get 156.8. And remember, for variance, we don't worry about those squared units because they are awkward. And for our standard deviation, take the square root. We get 12.52, so 12.5. And once we have these values, we could then talk about whether some value is an outlier or not. We can use the mean and the standard deviation. Any value that's more than three standard deviations away would be considered an outlier. And we'll take a look at that a little bit later on.